So today I'm going to talk about the importance of color and uh, how it affects your perceptions on things. But first I'd like to maybe tell you or maybe remind you that if you go into a job interview and there's like a long list of candidates and you get to go first or last, you leave a longer lasting impression on your interviewer. It's just how it works. I'm not, I'm not a scientist yet that studies that. Um, but also I learned that if you wear vibrant colors, such as red, you'll also last, also leave a lasting impression. So if you go in the middle or are wearing like a red tie or um, like I don't, I don't want to say a red dress, that's almost a lot of red, but they'll remember you, is my point. But um, color also has a lot of effect on how you perceive other things. For instance, taste. Um, there's actually, I found a couple studies preparation for today where they take a certain food and they place it in a container of a different color and then people taste test it and give them results. So one instance was a red strawberry mousse. It was presented to a group of people as a type of, for taste testing. One group or one mousse was on a white plate and one mousse was on a black plate. And the mousse on the white plate was 10% sweeter and 15% 15 more, 15 more flavorful, regardless that it was the same mousse. Um, I know that some of you drink coffee in this room. Some of you drink a lot of coffee. Do you, if you drink coffee, do you associate the color of your coffee with the intensity or the bitterness of your, of your taste? Like, the darker it is, it's going to be more bitter or more intense? So researchers found that brown uh, is associated with bitterness or anti-sweetness. And one of the researchers for this study was actually in a coffee shop and the barista said something along the lines of, you should get a clear mug, it would taste better. So he did this study where he picked a, a clear mug, a white mug, and a light blue mug. And the light blue is the opposite of brown on the color wheel, so it makes the brown pop. And coffee in a white mug tastes less sweet than in a clear mug. Regardless that it was the same pot of coffee on the same person that was drinking it, they thought that the white mug created a more bitter tasting coffee. So, color really does affect how you perceive certain things, even though it's something as little as taste. Um, so, I'd like to also present you with the idea of the sapper warp hypothesis. It's not really accepted fully anymore. This is from the 1930s. But basically it says that if you don't have a word for something, you can't think about it. Um, and in this case, if you don't have a word for a color, uh, I found an article saying that if you don't have a word for a color, you basically don't see it. You would either probably you would probably recognize it as a different color, like a different shade that you do recognize and have a name for it. It's not that you would be completely blind to it, and you would just replace it with a different shade. There is uh, another study called the uh, it was the Russian blues, and in R Russian they have two words for blue, whereas in English they have we have one. And one word in Russian is for darker blues, and one word is for lighter blues. And side by side, English and Russian speakers were tested on how quickly they could recognize and name a shade of blue. And Russians were more easily able to recognize a color of blue than an English speaker. Now, all of us could, unless you're colorblind, that makes a difference, I assume. But um, if I put a blue slide and an orange slide next to each other, you'd all be able to say blue and orange pretty quickly. But if I gave you two slides of orange, take a little bit longer to give each side a name. So basically I'd like to leave you with the idea that color is really important and that you might not actually have a say in how you perceive things because you didn't create the English language or you didn't create the Russian language and how you recognize a color. <laughs>